Hello fans and welcome to another Red Raider contest. This is Gary McGill along with Keith Smith, one of our sponsors. We did a little commentary with me tonight helping me out and uh, we're coming to you from the Bowles Field out here at the famous Harley Complex. Uh, this year we got the Big Wona coming here this year Keith and uh, if you have anything right off the top of your head that you can tell us about? Well they're 1-0 off fresh off a big win over Walnut Ridge so uh, they're in our division this year for the playoffs. So we're looking forward to a great contest tonight. That's good, and we also like to say London's going to know this coming off of a win. A big win off of Kent Ridge last week. So we're looking forward to a good game. So uh, I'll tell you what, folks, you stick around because uh, we got some more action coming right at you. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Go Raiders. From this angle, I can't see what else is on there. Here come the Raiders with their traditional who leads them out, but big boy Tyree. I don't call him boy, big man. Somebody that big got to be a man. And they're a little more civil here. All right, let's see. The last one's pile on. That would be me. Uh, as uh, number one, Kirk climbs through over the top. Yeah, Wheeler, Wheeler wants to take his big leap. Right? Yeah. Wheeler's getting his leaping practice in, and they drop him to the ground. <laughs> we got about 30 seconds uh, before the game starts, Keith. And feel free. I know you know how. You work with the LABC, is that, no, LA? London Area Boys Football League. Football League, yeah. And so. Uh, it's fourth, fifth, and sixth graders, so we've got a little bit different size here tonight. But a lot of the kids playing here for the for the Big Red tonight. Yeah. To come out of the program. So right. Pretty so exciting to see these. these basically, kids. you know what we can say and what we can't say. That's, oh, so yeah. I don't have to worry about that. That makes it nice. Because it's easy to get excited up here and all of a sudden you think you're down in the crowd and you say something that some parent would be offended by and we do our best not to offend anybody. You can't please everybody, but uh, I think we do a fairly good job of it. Yeah, tonight, Gary, it's a hot, humid night. I'm looking forward to a good contest and just a lot of fun sitting up here watching the ball game. Yeah, well, I, I drove my Ferrari out here tonight and, and when it got here, there's a lot of bugs were flying around. And Carl's been wanting to drive that Ferrari for ever, ever since. I got it, so he had to go back in town and get some bug spray. He didn't come back for an hour. He'd be riding, I probably rode about $15 worth of gas out. But uh, how'd it feel to ride that Ferrari, Carl? <laughs> yeah, real nice air conditioning. You make your own air, huh? We're getting ready for the kickoff as London kicks off. And who we got kicking off there, Keith? It's like Sean Myers, number 12. Okay. Fumble at the, about the 10-yard line, pick it up, and that's usually a broken play. Usually goes for some distance. They will make it up to the 25-yard line, 26 maybe. That was number nine, Paul Ross, on the return for the Golden Eagles. Jordy Jackson, once again, he started last week making the first two or three tackles on the kickoffs. Jordy, and Jordy looked real good last week on special teams. He did. And a, and a nose tackle for 170 pounds. Yeah. We, we do have the right roster tonight, so it'll be a lot easier to find them. First and 10 on the 27-yard line. Oh, quick hit at her in that. A little loose tackling there as they pick up about six yards on the play. That was B.J. Helton. He's a, he's a senior, heavily recruited, excellent defensive back, and, and be running tailback for him tonight. Okay. I didn't catch who made the tackle then, so we'll do our best to do that. You probably noticed Big Rollins quarterback. He's 6'5", 225, so it's kind of hard to miss him. Gary. Well, he is big, isn't he? He can see the whole field from here, from where he's at, and us too. A little simple hand, fumble. a fumble, and I believe they may have got it back. It's the ball was still bouncing around. London's ball, and London makes something happen on the second play of the game. I look like 71, Mike Coyle on the bottom of that pile with the football. <laughs> 54, they say, got that. Dusty, Dusty Jones. So London, first and 10 on the 23 yard line. And this is a game of breaks, and you make your own breaks. And what were you saying that they said about they, they scouted us last week and uh, their report was? We'll give it to you right we'll after get this to play. That a little bit later here. Let's watch the play. Dickens under center. Sets back to throw. He lets it, airs it out to 
Fade Wheeler, Wheeler. Oh. and it's there. First play of the game, touchdown to Wheeler. The old fly pattern. London goes up with 11.02 to go in the first quarter. London's up six points, pending the extra point. They got, uh, Wheeler got out there and uh, made a good fake move and got the defensive back turned around. He was turned completely around. Very and, impressed with not only the route run by Wheeler, but the nice loft on the ball thrown by Dickens. And to come out with a play like that, the first play of the game, I'm sure they weren't expecting that, that deep in the territory. And it's blocked, beautiful block by number two. Number two, Charlie Smith, the wide receiver. Scored four touchdowns last week on that block. So we got 11.02 to go in the contest, and uh, London goes up six to nothing. London will be kicking off, and uh, they did, you had a little scouting report here that uh, they gave uh, Keith. Oh, I just got a kick of reading this morning's Columbus Dispatch, and uh, uh, Coach Wetzel, the Golden Eagles, said the scout squad from last week came back from watching London's Kent Ridge ball game, and very impressed by what they saw from the London uh, football team. So we're expecting a big ball game tonight. That's that's a good report there on our part. I hope we didn't read that and uh, get the big head. It just shows that London has earned some respect with their victory last week over Kenton Ridge. Yeah, with London coming in with a 49 to seven win over Kenton Ridge last week, so they're riding kind of high right now as number 12 Myers be kicking off for the second time in the first quarter. Yeah, in case they think they're seeing a replay, Gary. No, this is the <laughs> second kickoff of the ball game so far. And he gets under this one. Clear down to about the eight yard line. It's Jeff Evans on the return. And I think he's a load to bring down. Nice tackle by David Wassmuth. Number 25. David Wassmuth. Smith had a couple nice plays last week also on special teams. I believe he even had an interception. Yeah, I think he did. Lennon scored about every way you can th every way you can think of uh, last week. Interceptions, fumble returns. 22 BJ Helton on the carry. He's bought down by number 45. In on a tackle Willard. Dusty Jones in there and Jordy Jackson in there also. Very impressed last week with the defensive line from London, the way they kept the offensive line off of the linebackers, which allows 45 Willard and 54 Jones to make a lot of tackles. And I think we've seen a holding play there. It looked like I a hold. Didn't there. see a flag go down. Oh, yeah. A flag down. Oh, yeah. Micah Stokes out there on a nice tackle, number 69. Micah Stokes. He goes 6'6", 240, so he's can't kind of miss hard him, to get around that end. <laughs> See him on Christmas? And even if you hold him, you can't keep him down. He plays uh, outside linebacker and... Uh, That's going to be a 10 yard mark off from the spot. So. Second down, looks like he's second down about 18. So, right now, uh, Big Wall is not getting off too good of a start. I expect we're going to see some passing plays here real soon. I, I heard they were a passing team. Man in motion, it sets back to patch. It's like I said, it's knocked bound by number 69. 69, Micah Stokes again with the second big play in a row. Just don't get by that big guy, do you? I'm and sure that's just a fundamental play, Keith. Get your hands up in the air and knock it down. And when you're 6'6 six, six and you got your hands up, even if the quarterback's 6'5, you still got the advantage by an inch, Gary. There you go. We're on uh, third and 18 on the 22 yard line. 10, 10 to 10 20 to go in the first quarter. Defense got a pro eye. on the pass. Willard on a blitz. And they, they didn't fool anybody on that screen play as number 45. Willard puts a perfect tackle on there, Clay. I'll tell you what, Gary, Scott Willard started to blitz and then had the wherewithal to realize that his man, the running back, that he was supposed to cover on the pass play was going out and he stayed right with him. Very smart play by Scott Willard. 
This is reading out, reading the offense. Made a very good read, and they're they're teaching this. And the, there's a whole lot of teaching going on in the practices anymore. Odd punt formation, but number two, Charlie Smith, back to punt. Yeah, we got two people back. We got Wheeler and uh, Myers, I think it is, back to return. Got a good punt. London attempt, Myers attempts to return and maybe gets one or two yards on that, but we are in their territory. London will take over first and ten on about the uh, 41, 42 yard line. Nice fundamental coverage there by number five, Matt DeLong from Big Walnut. Did a nice job of keeping his head right on Sean Myers' hips and just laid into him. Nice. We were talking something about a rule on giving a receiver, punt receiver, kickoff receiver, whatever. Yeah, maybe we some get a room. second here, Gary. We might be able to cover that. I mean, the differences between high school and college football that a lot of people don't understand on about that punt play. London's in the pro eye with double wide outs, one to the right, one to the left. Dickens comes out, option play, he keeps the ball, he's good. That's up he's got some room, good blocking, almost stripping behind, and he goes all the way down to the 20 yard line. A pickup of about 18, about 18 yard pickup. Nice credit there to the downfield blocking by the fullback, number 45, Scott Willard. It's also good, good uh, running. He's picking up his blockers and pointing which way to go and staying within the range of the, of the game and not trying to get out there and be a star and do it all by yourself. That's nice the same lineup here. by the quarterback there on that play. Josh Dickens is an all-around player. He can play just about any position, I believe. Fullback dive. Yep. And that's Willard. He's good for about five yards, seven yards maybe. He takes it all the way down to the about the 12-yard line. Ran right over top of Dusty Jones that time, the left guard, and he did a nice job of getting out there in front of that play. He's second and three. None is really spreading, spreading the, the offense out this time. Everything's coming to the near side. Look for him to go to the opposite yeah, side. Laney go off tackle to the and right. Laney with the strength takes it all the way down to about the six yard line. That should be a first down, Gary. First and goal, I believe. They're moving the chains. Lennon's not having much trouble moving the ball so far. Thing you'll notice tonight, number 71, Mike Coyle's lining up at center tonight for the first time. The regular center's out of action tonight, Matt Sanders. We hope him a speedy recovery. Yeah, Matt's coming back. He'd come back this year off an, uh, a, um, I think automobile accident or some kind of an accident he was in last year. and uh, He's having some problems from that, so Matt, Matt we, well, hope you'll speedy recovery. As we hand off the ball to Laney, nothing doing, caught in the backfield. Getting a little tongue twisted here thinking about Matt because Max, I know his family, I know he's, he's a good kid oh. and he wants to play so bad and uh, this injury is just going to sideline him for a while. Unfortunately, we just had a personal foul against London. Uh, hopefully cooler heads will prevail out there. And it looks like it seems to be uh, one of our senior leaders is having the problem, so uh, I'm, God, I'm almost sure they did something to him, even though he is kind of wired up. Looks like Jordan Brock's checked into the ball game at tailback, but it's going to force London into a, uh, it was after the play, so it should be a second and 21. As soon as they get the ball marked off. And I just saw something I really liked. When they took uh, the player out, he went right straight to the headphones and some of the coaches from up top told him exactly what happened and what the situation is and which helps to cool down. I didn't see the head coach run over there and fussing at him or, you know, don't do this, don't do that. Uh, all these coaches are, have a job and uh, Dustin, the head coach, is letting them do their job. And you're going to have unsportsmanlike calls when uh, tempers like that prevail, you know, flare up and stuff. So it's going to happen. Second, Bottom line is get it under control. Second and 23. And it's batted down by number 32. That was Brian Howard, 5 feet 10 inch junior out there on the play. Looked like they were trying to throw to Andre Tyree, the tight end out in the right flat. I think we had Tyree and uh, Wheeler out there. 
big play here for the Big Red, third and 23. 23, that is a big play. Let's see what Lennon comes up with. Number 71, our center here, he never gets anything, Mike Coyle. Really, Gary, I'd look at this as a two down situation. You're not you're not in a situation where you got a punt, so really you got and you're not gonna kick a field goal, so you got two downs to make up 23 yards here. So look for maybe a draw play. Look like they might have got a delay a game here. Which is gonna push us back a little bit farther. Just need a little extra room to throw that long pass, Gary. <laughs> Somebody didn't know their assignment. <laughs> and they were a little late getting to their spot. As Laney goes back into the game, makes a third and 28. <coughs> third and 28 on the 28 yard line, how about that? Dick and rolling to the right. He's got a blocker, but he's gonna be knocked down after a pickup of about four or five yards. Has number 11, Evan Circle on the play for Big Walnut. So now what do we do here? We got a field goal kicker. Is he in, the, are we in his range? Well, you're talking 50 plus yards here, Gary. I don't think, well, at least a 40, be a 41 yarder if they'd line it up. And I'm not, I see Sean Myers coming into the game. Yep. And he's got the kicking I got a feeling team. he might uh, go for it, or, unless we got a little fake play here. <laughs> it looks, uh -oh. like, looks like Jay Hoey, the special teams coach, going out on the field. Yeah, and while you got a second, uh, Keith, uh, that uh, rule on the receiving the ball. Okay, well, basic difference a lot of people think that you got to always give a, uh, a punt catcher at least two yards to catch. Not necessarily in high school, you can be right up on top of him. Just as long as you give him a chance to catch the ball, you can be right in his face, basically. That's one change between the high school game and the college game. And a lot of people always think that there's a, you know, got to give him two yards, got to give him two yards. Well, not necessarily so in the high school game. Yeah, and we had that situation uh, last year. We try to bring you a rule of the week, well, a couple of them each week if we can. Update everybody on what's going on as Sean Myers sets up for a it's going to be a 40 yarder, Gary. He can kick it. It's going to be interesting to see if they, if they actually do it. The holder is uh, number 11. It's That's down. Dale. It's up, but it's going to be That's short. It's going to be well short. Dale was a whole yard short there. But it's a good effort by Sean Myers. He's only a sophomore. Maybe we'll see those in the next couple of years, him hitting those 40 yarders. And we didn't have a, we'd only lose. He couldn't really punt in that situation. Unless you were able to kick it straight up and down. It was pretty much two down territory if Although you want to go for it on offense. So. I have seen some punch like that. That is another big difference in the uh, high school game. No matter where you kick from, even if you try a 70 yard field goal and you miss, the other team will always start at the 20. So there was a good advantage there. A lot of people think you get the ball back right. at the previous line of scrimmage. There's a quick hitter up the middle. And Laney's right in there on that tackle. It was 22 on 22 there. B.J. Laney making a nice tackle on 22 B.J. Helton. So B.J. B.J. on B.J. There you go. But nice tackle by B.J. Laney. But not until he made a five-yard run. So we got second and five on the 25. I'm sure coach doesn't want him getting that, that deep into the defensive area. Sits back to throw the ball. And he's tripped up by number four, number four Jordy, Jordy Jackson. Jackson. He's a pretty big target. He's not too hard to pick him up. I got yep. a feeling from watching so far that London is expecting a lot of running plays or short dump passes because 22 B.J. Laney, the the, uh, the strong safety, is playing up almost like a linebacker and just leaving 25 David Wasmuth out there in the free safety position all alone. So they're really crowded up to the line. And the cornerbacks are up pretty pretty tight on the line also. Overthrown, number 10, Dickens. I might have got a finger on it, but uh, Big Wall is forced to punt. Fourth and seven on their 23-yard line, so London will be getting the ball once again in the uh, first quarter. We have a 
Six to nothing advantage of, for London. 6.04 to go in the first quarter. Very impressed with London's two return men. Sean Myers took one into the house last week. I think we can stay away from that one. Let it go out of bounds at about, about the 54 yard line, Carl. <laughs> Keith still ain't caught that one. Yeah, 54 yard line. Oh, I got you. <laughs> We're on the 46 yard line. It's not Canadian ball. I did that one time a few years back and I never heard the end of that. And I was serious when I called it that. <laughs> Tonight's going to be a real test on these kids. It's about 70, in the upper 70s at game time. A lot of two-way players, so we're going to see how uh, how the strength and conditioning program of London's going to pay off. Got to pitch out to Laney. He didn't get too good hand on it, and he's sitting there with number 11 and number 22 again. He's waiting on him. So nothing doing on that. We had lost him about two yards. 20, 22 B.J. Helton for Big Walnuts being recruited by a lot of major colleges as a defensive back. He's been all league two years in a row. Uh, very well respected. What I read up on him, there's supposed to be some pretty quick kids on that Big Walnut team. So don't be surprised if one of them gets out there and turns on the Jets as we get a timeout. Like, official timeout. Looks like B.J. Laney's got a little equipment problem with his shoulder pads. I think he's ready to go now. Jordy could almost be a running back in your uh, league, couldn't he? Uh, or Akeem. Ooh. As a near catch. You notice there what a nice job uh, 18 Brandon Wheeler did of actually breaking up the interception with 23 Sean Conley out there on the coverage for Big Long. Well, I tell you what, uh, Dickens didn't have much time. He had to unload the ball because they was they was ready to dump him big time. Third and 12, Gary. Uh, another passing situation for London. Shotgun formation, which is fairly new to this program. It's like quarterback draw. Nothing doing. He just barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. Big Walnut's not giving up anything right now. Glenn Lennon's going to be forced to punt. Punting team comes on. By the way, the uh, reserves won last week. They won big. It was 32 to nothing. I think. I think it was something like that. And I think the freshman lost the other night. London's real lucky to have one of the better punters in Central Ohio here, Josh Inlow. He laid off a real good one last week. See if he can get an end over end with uh, spiral this way. When I say end over end, I mean with the nose pointing down. A little wobbly, but it's going to get some distance on it. Get a good roll. Nice net yard. It's going to take it clear down to the. Nine and a half yard line. Nice job by number 32, Jordan Brock, down there on the coverage. Pin him within the 10 yard line. Can't ask for much more than that. You know, I noticed that last week. It was odd. London got all those points, but it seemed like most of the game was played in in, in London's territory. And it seemed like uh, Kenton Ridge had the ball the major part of the time, even though they only got seven points. I think so now it's that. twisted around here. Seeing that again tonight, that we are playing on London's half of the, or London's at least London's offensive half of the field. Well, it rolls out, pitch out, going to the short side, and there's that speedster. That's it. And we got flags. Smith was your ball carrier. Gary, that's number two, Charlie Smith. He ran for three touchdowns last week against Walnut Ridge and also caught a touchdown pass. So he's a good athlete. He lined up a receiver in the first couple sets of formations. Now we're seeing him line up at the tailback position. And you can see he's got some wheels as we got a, a, I don't know what the call is, but I think he was hit after he was out of bounds. Call's gonna go against London. It's a pretty big penalty. Good yeah, 10 yards. 15 yard personal foul looks like, and that's it's gonna give 
Big Walnut the best field position of the night for them so far. First and 10 on about the 36th yard line. Fumble. And they got another Tyree fumble. Tyree was almost on it. I think somebody was trying to pick it up, Carl. Play number two, Sam Smith, or Charlie Smith got back on that. Charlie's brother, Sam Smith, who was an uh, All-Ohio uh, basketball player at Worthington Christian on their state championship teams. He's going to Dayton on a full-ride scholarship with your... With my nephew. Brooks Hall. Brooks Hall. He got a big wide to this side. Pitch to the short side. And that'll kill you every time because you're not looking for that. They're spreading everybody out wide and running the short side. And it, Charlie Smith, he's a he's a quick, he's a speedster. This new formation from Big Walnut with number two back there, tailback, looks like it's paying off dividends for him. Yeah, I think they were kind of feeling us out there the first few minutes of the first quarter. And we still got 3:27 to go in the first quarter. We got third and two. That ought to be a short one. No problem there. Like a fullback dive to number 23, Sean Conley. Nice little run, nice job by their offensive line. Jordy Jackson in on the tackle once again. He's very well to be their leading tackle. First and 10 on the 48 yard line. Looks like Big Walnut's going to have a chance to move into London territory for the first time tonight and pick up just a couple more yards. Lennon had another shot at a fumble there and weren't able to get on it. We don't want to let uh, Big Walnut get any momentum going or we could uh, be having some problems out there. I've already noticed that London started to do a little bit of substitutions for their two-way players, maybe give them a breather now and then. Good strategy by the coach to understand it's a hot, humid night and he's going to need them all the way to the end. And they've run that same play up the short side of the field. Sean Conley, the ball carrier. I don't know if we caught it on camera, but that time they used the number two as a fake back going around the right side and then threw, threw the quick pitch to the fullback, Conley, going around the left side. So maybe look for them to carry out that long pitch to number two here shortly. Marcus Candy goes going in the game the for Tyree. Side. Yeah, they got it spread out pretty wide here. They haven't run number two to the wide side of the field yet, so look for that. That's a it's quick passed. hitter up the middle hole. For a first down. This was way too quick for me, Gary. I thought the quarterback was back throw a pass. <laughs> he uh, laid about a pretty good fake there. He went back and he handed off. Sean Conley, like you said, once again, and Jordy Jackson in on the tackle. That was enough for a very little first down. On our 41-yard line, first and 10, we have a timeout. The officials are calling a timeout here. Timeout London. As uh, Mr. Kahu doesn't, uh, wants to make some changes here, get some people straightening around. They're moving the ball at will, Keith. And they do look like they're getting a nice surge out of their offensive line. That makes a big difference. And it uh, looks like London pretty much had them scouted out as I said earlier, look for Big Walnut to run the ball a lot. Yeah. Got a good turnout once again tonight, even though it is about 75 to 80 degrees out here. As Carl pans, this, pans the crowd, the stadium that I see is about three quarters way full. We pick out somebody. This is a beautiful facility. I mean, London should be so impressed with the group of people that came together in this town to put this thing on the map, and what a wonderful job they've all done. I've seen a big hit of Chubby Wilson, I mean, Cubby Wilson. <laughs> He'll like that. He had a pretty good career here. Cubby did? Yeah, Cubby's an excellent ball player. He came up with that team, I believe, that went undefeated in a, somewhere around 76 or something like that. 
They had a bunch of athletes on that team. First and ten for Big Walnut. Number Man. two's in motion. He's a he's a pass catcher too. Another Pull quick hitter. Five. Quick hitter right up the middle. That's uh, catching Lennon off balance. Sean Conley once again. And he's pretty close to a first down. Like about an eight yard run. Just a nice quick hitter. Quick quick uh, hole pop by the offensive line. And Second and two on the 33. Nice sustained drive here by Big Walnut. Three and we got another clock. timeout by the uh, officials. Something is not right. I think Jordan Brock had a little equipment problem. Man in motion, short side of the field once again. And he's gonna get loose one of these times. He's all the way down to the 25 yard line. A nice saving tackle by Jordan Brock there because that, that fullback was just about by everybody before everybody realized where he was coming from. That quickness is working for him. We're down to 133 in the first quarter and uh, six to nothing right now for in London's favor. Kind of got a feeling here, Gary, that the, they're keeping a big eye on number two and uh, Big Walnut's countering by running the quick hitters to the fullback and catching London a little bit off guard. Which is good strategy on Big Walnut's part. Another quick hitter needs nothing doing that time. He might have got to the line of scrimmage. Dusty Jones, number 54, just made a nice pop. Good eyes. How about that double window? That's we we'll have to bring our squeegee out here and paint those windows. Second and nine on London's 23-yard line, and we're down under 50 seconds in the first quarter. Pitch out. Just the pitch to the right London's been looking for. And he had a few blockers, but he's not going anywhere. Number four, Jordy Jackson, 170 pounds from the nose tackle position, is just playing a phenomenal Come ball. Come all the way across the field and makes that tackle. Jordy Jackson was one of the, I'm thinking he was one of the better runners on the uh, track team. Brandon Wheeler, I guess, is also in on that tackle too. Sometimes it's the size of the fight and the dog instead of the dog in the fight, right? <laughs> you got that right. And we're going to run this quarter out. We in this quarter, Carl, with a scoreboard shot showing London six and the Eagles zero. But the Eagles are knocking on the door at third and seven on the 21 yard line. Okay, we'll pick up the signs here, some of the backers, and also give you some more backers. I can't really make that one out, Carl. And then make white tigers, they got theirs really big. There we go. First Baptist Church, 4th Street, Dwyer Brothers Hardware, Athletic Boosters Club, and Citizens National Bank, I think it is. First Merit Bank, and Warsh on Wheels, I believe that's what that is. Storage Center, Suntan Center. Uh, yeah, I need that. <laughs> Cappy's Pizza. Uh, Nelson and Ball. Nelson and Ball. Heating and Plumbing. River Valley Co-op. And what is that one there, Carl? Royal Cabinets, Gary. Royal Cabinets. And we also have some others who uh, give up time and and donations to help us run the, bring this program to you. I'll give you a few of them right now off the bat. We have Dwyer's and uh, Wheeler Enterprise, that's KFC Chicken, and Wilson Printing, and Al Renner, uh, down in Charleston Pharmacy. I'll give you some more here in a little bit. Third and seven on the 21 yard line. Big play here for Big Walna and a big one for London. Set that's back. A lateral. And it's trouble. They're down to about the 10 yard line. That looks like it's sort of a first down, yeah, Gary. First down. Create a fourth and one situation. Oh, they got it. They're moving the chain, so they got it. Brandon Wheeler in on that tackle. So, uh, Big Walnut's knocking on the door. 
And same play, but he's bought down quickly. That's number 54, but Dusty Jones. Dusty there. Jones in on that tackle. So they're on about the 11 yard line right now. They may have lost a yard on that play. We also have uh, London Paint Plus, and they're one of the sponsors of this TV program. And the manager and owner of that position is one of your, is my co partner here tonight, Keith Smith. Glad to have you aboard, Keith. Thank you. Oh boy, this guy's running hard now. Number two, Sam Smith. No, that's Charlie Smith again. I'm sorry, up the middle. Nice quick hitter. Brock was in on that tackle that time, but Smith was almost, he was uh, going for a touchdown that time, I'll tell you. We're down on about the two yard line. They figured out they can play with London, so London's got, they're going to have their hands full. They're definitely knocking on the door. Quick hitter once again, and they stopped him short. Nice play by number 71, Mike Coyle, number 21, Andre Tyree, and number 32, Jordan Brock. Are we the fourth down? Fourth and one. What? This is going to be a big test here. Fourth and one. You make the call, Keith. What, what do we run here? It's going to be a big momentum builder right here. Quite honestly, they've had about four plays in a row going to number tw number two, Charlie Smith. I look for the quick hitter to 23. I look for the quarterback to keep it. Oh, and London stopped him. Did he get in? Loose ball. Loose ball. London recovered in the end zone. What a Dusty, play by the defense. Go ahead, Keith. Dusty Jones recovers a fumble in the end zone. I didn't see the first hit. Who got that hit, Gary? Uh, there's two or three people on that first hit. I didn't catch it, but I thought they had him stop in the backfield. And all of a sudden, it looked like it, somehow they wiggled way through there and then end up losing the ball. So London, London takes over on the 20-yard line after he covers fumble in the end zone. Big play and a big momentum builder there for London. That was big. That was really big. Maybe what helped us when I showed that, that London Paint Plus was one of the sponsors of this, uh, uh, they must have caught on and said, well, we'll have to do something for Keith. We got Madison Tire and Julian. Uh, they have proms and tuxedo outfits. Uh, so give them some of your business. A heck of a play. Just, Carl, how much time have we used? Okay. Um, we got Maristop, also one of our sponsors. Pizza Hut. Donato's. Donato's Pizza. And uh, Ernie's Medicine Shop. Chuck Spinning. Spinning Insurance. I believe that's what it is. American Legion. Kronk and Shag. Skaggs. <laughs> Kronk and Shag. Kronk and Skaggs. Yeah, they'll like that. Yeah, Kronk Don, Don will like you for that one. Yeah. So, we got a little time out here. Let's go. First and 10 on the 20-yard line after a deal. And the situation is, uh, after review of the tape, the quarterback tried to hand the ball off, and they jammed him up, and he couldn't get the handoff. Quick out to number 12. Fumble. And fumble, and they get the ball right back. Number nine for Big Book, Big Walnut, Paul Ross on the fumble recovery. Myers makes a beautiful catch, and then a fumble. So, now it's up to the defense to take over once again. It was nice to see the aggressiveness on London to come right off for the big turnover and, and go right for the big play, right? Not the big play, but at least something a little bit more aggressive than a running play. And now they've got to put the defensive helmets back on again. Well, we're looking at Myers, and Myers is just a sophomore, so I'm not making excuses, but there's a, that's almost the same play they tried down on the one-yard line, and they jammed the quarterback up so quick that uh, he couldn't get the handoff. Once again, we got to say Jordy Jackson's name. He was right on the bottom of that pile, him and number 21, Andre Tyree. I just got... Uh, Word over the wire, internet, that he was the leading tackle last week, Jordy Jackson. Got quite a hole here. He gets some room. He's gone. 22 he's, still he's still on his feet. He's still hit three or four times. He's still moving. 
down to about the seven yard line. Look like London missed a few tackles there, but you do have to give credit to 69 Micah Stokes, a defensive lineman who just continued to pursue the play until they finally got him down. He was, uh, from what I'm gathering, he was running like he didn't even have the ball. He just running. Well, they're, they're switching their tailbacks in there. Now they, now they got Smith out of the game. They got B.J. Helton back in. They've also switched quarterbacks, yep. too. Number four quarterback right now, that's Brockman. Joel Brockman, he's, he's a junior. Now, reading in the dispatch that they do run a two quarterback set at different times, but so look for State, both of them. Ohio State set up second and eight, which didn't work out too great for Ohio State. Number two, Smith back in, pitch to the left to Smith, and nothing doing. Smith tried to go back to, to the against the grain. He still picked up about two or three yards on his own. He's gonna be faced with about a third and goal from the five, Gary. Eight minutes and ten seconds left in the quarter. Score is still six to nothing, London, and Big Wallace knocking on the door once again. London dodges this bullet. They're living lucky tonight. <laughs> Brockman under center, the smaller quarterback of the two. He's back to pass. He sits back to pass. He keeps the ball. Running. And he could be awful close to being in. Down to about the one. Nice tackle by 25, David Wassman. That was a good move on the quarterback's part to see that area, be able to pick up that yardage because he had all the receivers recovered. Well, Gary, this is not a replay again coming up. It's fourth, fourth and one, one again. once again. You're not seeing a replay, but it is a replay. Timeout, Big Walnut. Fourth and one, Carl. Fourth and one, a replay of just a few minutes last ago. Time, last time they quite tried a quick hitter. Same play again, touchdown. He's in this time. Number he two, even touched. Charlie Smith goes untouched into the end zone for the Big Walnut Golden Eagles. And how big is that extra point going to look right now? We got a tie ball game pending the extra point. 7:26 to go in the second quarter. This is a freshman offensive lineman, number 75, in there to kick for Big Walnut. He's it's, got it. Looks like it's good. Big Walnut takes the lead. London's on the losing end for the first time this year. Seven to six. Seven to six. I assume we are up and running. Big Walnut comes out of a huddle. Number 11. Evan Circle, a junior, 6'2", be kicking off for Big Long. Who we got back here? Brock and uh, Myers. Myers. Will be your return people. They picked like up something. Scott Willard, number 45, bringing it up to fullback. And he's taken down at the 40-yard line after a pickup of about 10 yards. Mac Long. The other short back in that formation back there alongside Scott Willard was number 31, Matt Russell. I guess it makes me feel kind of old because I remember being down at the old field and having him and his twin brother out there playing football on the sidelines when they was about two years old and uh, now they're out here on the big field playing. Yeah, Matt's a uh, sophomore this year. Him and Brock both, so they had two or three sophomore. Well, so is Myers. All three or four of them back in the sophomores. B.J. Laney, 22, fumble. Another fumble, and looks like Big Warren has the ball. This is a night for fumbles. Look like that was recovered by Evan Circle. Same kid that kicked off the ball, also plays defensive back for the Golden Eagles. It's kind of biting us in the back, isn't it? Being able to, not being able to hold on to the ball. Well, B.J. does have his right hand heavily wrapped, so maybe that might have something to do with it. Got kind of a cute story to tell you a little bit later about uh, 
about the B.J. Laney fan club okay. and how far it extends. First and 10, 47 yard line after fumble recovery. Big one on the move. It's a quick point. option play to the right. And it was gone nowhere. That was diagnosed and Cut that up real quick. Looks like with Big Wana, we get a very different look with number four Brockman in there at quarterback versus what we saw with the 6'5", uh, 225 pound Schwartz in there at quarterback. Well, Much you got quicker. Brockman, he's, like you say, he's quicker and he, he comes out of the pocket. He, he can move around, plus he can carry the ball. We're still seeing very little passing from Big Wana, and that's London must have that scouted out pretty good because their safeties are playing up very close and their corners are playing very close also. And they could figure maybe they got we got the speed to stay with them. But uh, you were saying about something about Laney? Oh, I was down this Christmas. I was down in Tampa, Florida, visiting. Uh, Actually, it's uh, some friends, and uh, I had told them I was from London, Ohio, and they said, is B.J. Laney really that good of a tailback? <laughs> in waited. Florida, huh? In Florida. He says something. And as I found out, it's my stepsister down there. She's really good friends with uh, B.J.'s mo mother. Here come the Falcons again. Nothing doing. Maybe a yard or two. <clears throat> in on that tackle. If you like somebody's down speed. for London. 54, Dusty Jones. He's back up. He'll bounce back up and play. And Tyree. Tyree's in there, made a tackle, and got up before, any, before I could tell who was on the tackle. One thing I noticed, Andre moved from a, a linebacker position to a defensive line position. I think that gives London a lot of advantages, and we'll talk about that here in a second. Rockman back to pass. He gets it off, and it's... <laughs> Number 33, um, How he uh, heard footsteps because that ball was laid out there perfect. He was running before he caught the ball. I think he was kind of thinking end zone on that, Gary. Rule of thumb, catch the ball before you're caught. But nice coverage out there from London. And Fourth and ten, this could be a fake punt because I'm pretty sure they uh, have ten yards. I doubt they'll fake it. That's Brockman oh, that's back here with a pooch punt. kick. Pretty punt. Oh, oh look, grab the ball. On London. What are we doing down there? A little confusion on London's part, but B.J. Lanny was smart enough to get on top of the football. It looked like it hit on the, somebody's foot. London's going to call a timeout and then, uh, do some talking to some people because that was, that was kind of weird looking from here. Yeah, a lot of coaches will put one receiver back in that punt formation so you don't have that communication problem. And sometime in a short field situation, I think you've got a lot bigger advantage of just using one receiver back there instead of two. London will take over first and 10 on the 17 yard line. And we have a score of 7 to 6. Big Walnut. 5.43 to go in the half. Looks like we got 31. Matt Russell in there at fullback now. Giving a little spell to Scott Willard. Coach is not afraid to use his people. B.J. Laney around the right-hand side. Russell made a beautiful block there. Good pitch out to Laney. Russell's showing that he's going. He wants some playing time. When you run that option play to the wide side of the field, sometimes it just stretches out too far, and you just don't get around the corner quick enough. Right. So sometimes there's a big advantage to run that play to the close side of the field also. And that's just about what uh, Big Walnut's been doing. They're running the short side, getting that pitch out real quick so he can turn up real quick. I'd look for London to put the ball up in the air here, Gary. I'm, maybe I'm just optimistic about their passing game, but I think they got enough confidence that they're going to see them air it out here a little bit. Second and three right now. Dickens back to pass. He lets her fly. It's there. A nice catch by Josh Enlow, number Josh 89. Enlow. But Josh isn't too short either. Unfortunately, we got a holding call in the backfield, and that's going to bring that one back, Gary. But a nice catch by Josh Enlow. And a nice throw by Josh Dickens. Josh to Josh connection worked out good there, but yeah. unfortunately, that holding call is going to bring everything back. Josh is right-handed uh, quarterback, rolling to his left, throwing right, and uh, boy, threw. What's that, Carl? 
What's that? <laughs> See, you can't get that from here, huh? Well, he didn't throw back to the right. He actually threw to the left side of the field, but that's kind of tricky, rolling to your left when you're right-handed and throwing. Lennon picked up a pretty big penalty that time. All the way back to the defensive linebacker chasing you down, right on your tail. All way so down Dickon did a nice job to get rid of it. Second and 17 here. And we got some flags flying. Looks like maybe the right-hand side of the line for London jumped a little bit. Uh, second and 22 on the five-yard line. Those penalties are really doing it, taking its toll on us. Dicking back to pass. Myers running a short in route. Hold on to the ball. He's still up. He's still running. And he gets up to about the uh, 16, about 17, 17 yard, yard, line. yard line. It's going to be about third and 10, 12. About third and 10, Gary. He done a good job making the catch, eluding some tackles, and holding on to the ball. They're going to have two wide receivers to the left. Maybe look for Wheeler to get involved in the offense here. Dickin back rolling He's out. To the He's left got Dickin some time to throw the ball. Ooh, and a beautiful hit on 45. Willer, he was hit just as the ball hit, got to him. That was B.J. Helton, number 22 for Big Walnut. No wonder you can see why some Division I colleges are looking at that young man. He played that perfect. So we're looking at fourth and ten. Definite pump and punting situation. So I'm looking for Enlow to come on the field. He's already out there. Inlow hasn't been putting too many real pressure punting situations this year so far, but this one's going to be high pressure here. He's got to get off a good one. Nice snap back. Oh, beauty kick. Beauty kick. It's going to be a... Oh, fumble. Yeah. And did we do it? Because Lenny was trying to get the ball and run with it. We did end up with the ball. Looks like 32 I'm Jordan sure Brock. going to be told about that. Can you advance a punt? Yes, you can advance a fumble on a punt like that. The situation in there is be sure you got the ball. That odd-shaped football is very hard to pick up, so nice heads-up play by Jordan Brock to, to be smart enough just to fall on the football and gain possession. So London is still on offense, the first and 10 on the 44-yard line. Has a pick up about 25 yards. You know, 341 <laughs> left in the first half here, Gary. London's going to be hard-pressed to try to Put a, put a nice scoring drive together. B.J. Laney, second man through, and he gets back to the original line of scrimmage in maybe a yard before he's taken down. Those blocks are not able to hold that long. That uh, second man through, it's got to be like clockworks. Very impressed by Big Walnut's quickness because they're, they're not the most physically large team out there, but right. do get a nice pursuit by their linebackers and some very quick defensive linemen. We're down to... Just over three minutes to go in the first half. Seven to nothing, Big Walnut on top. Seven to six, I'm right, you're right, Carl. Like London's gonna try a shotgun formation. I didn't stole six points from London, did I? Quarterback draw, Dickon. He Dickin. picked up five yards. Gonna bring up a third and four. And he come down in a possible fumble situation because when he come down, the ball was flying. Come down, hit the ground with the ball. Uh, that's kind of tricky. Looked like maybe the officials were talking to London about a potential penalty on Big Walnut, but they don't, they don't see a flag down. This is a much better team than what we played last week. <coughs> Even though they're not near, no, no bigger, they're small. Third and five on the 45 yard line. Dickens under center. Long Wheeler, count. Wheeler's out to the right here. They he can't get away. A fumble. Another fumble. Number 32 for Big Walnuts on the ball. He scooped that ball up like That's it was nothing. Brian Howe, number 32 for Big Walnut with a nice play. I didn't see who, who forced the tackle. I tell you what, that was a beautiful fumble recovery. 
He reached out there with a big paw and just yeah, grabbed it, just pulled it in. So that's that's what three fumbles in this first half. Trying not to count, Gary. Trying not to count. Yeah, you don't have any choice. <laughs> It happens. First and ten on the 43 yard line. Big one is taking over. We got 2.06 to go. Well, London last week got three big touchdowns off of, off of, off of turnovers like that. So I guess uh, what comes around goes around sometimes. Looks like Brockman in again, a quarterback. Quick handoff to Smith, and they're nowhere to go. Nothing Andre to go. Tyree is fighting him down. You come in against the big tie, and uh, you might as well just hang it up. I started to say earlier, Gary, that Andre did a wonderful job last year playing linebacker. But I think he really helps the team a lot more as a defensive tackle because, he, first of all, he ties up two blockers almost right off the bat. And uh, he can still fight through and make a lot of tackles. And he, and he keeps he keeps the uh, linebackers free to make the tackles. You see Willard and Jones make a lot of tackles for London. And a lot of the thanks goes to Andre Tyree and those big defensive linemen. We got a second and ten, man in motion. That's Helton in motion. Quick hitter. That little scat that's, back. That's number Smith two. up the middle, Charlie Smith, the junior. Is he related to you? No, he's not related <laughs> to me, even though I did grow up. My biggest rival in high school was Big Walnut. Is that right? Yeah. That was when Big Walnut was a much smaller school. But now that now they've joined the uh, Big Ohio Capital Conference schools now, they're playing with the big boys in, in Columbus with all the big suburbs. They used to be in a in a Morrow County League up in Delaware and Morrow County. So we got a third and two on the 38 yard line. Quick hitter again. I believe they got it. Only got 47 seconds left to play, and looks like Big Walnut's Tyree not looking. Tyree is in on that tackle once again. Big Walnut's not looking for the big play. They was just looking for the first down there. 31 yard line, Carl. Talk to me. They what? 47 seconds okay. left, Gary. Brockman back to pass. And they're airing it out, and they got for number nine. Oh, that was a beautiful pass. Just maybe a foot overthrown. Looked like it should have been caught, and he got behind. Well, behind Laney. Back down there. And I think they probably scouted Laney out as far as uh, making that type of pass because he's not one of the he's not the faster back back there. But he plays smart. I was kind of surprised to see number four put the ball up in the air like that. He threw a nice pass. Beautiful pass. He's going for it again. A little lateral type pass, and who's on him but Tyree? Come clear across the field. Gary, when you see a defensive tackle like that make a play on a screen pass, <laughs> you know you've got a special athlete there that can really play the game. And it looked like he just rolled on him. Clock's still running. Seven to six. 18 Third seconds. Six. Brockman back to pass again. again. Stokes on pursuit. He's going for the end zone. That looks Since intercepted. intercepted they're, they're asking for the by ball. Number 18, Brian Wheeler. Intercepted by Wheeler. Brandon Wheeler. The I'm chicken sorry. man. He flapped his wings and went up and got that ball. That's all in fun, Brandon, but you did a good job stopping that play. London will take over on about the five-yard line. I don't know if we caught it on camera, but nice pursuit there by 69, Micah Stokes, and number 31, Matt Russell, in pursuit of the quarterback before he threw that interception. Yeah, he was forced to throw it, but the play was there. It was just a matter of who's going to go up and like. Wheel is used to making those type of catches. Used yeah, don't throw, like Carl said, don't throw no jump ball to Wheeler. Because he'll usually come down with it. Good job, Brandon. Well, with eight and a half seconds, looks like eight. London's prepared to just take a knee here. With eight and a half seconds left. And that's probably about the smartest thing they could have done, because take a chance on losing the ball or getting a fumble in the end zone or something like that. We end the quarter with a score of Big Walnut 7, London 6. Stick around, folks. We got the band coming at you shortly.
Folks, once again, we've got about two minutes to go before the uh, second half starts. London is down by a score of seven to six. Um, Big Walnut has Keith but Smith here with me, and will testify that Big Walnut has put on quite a show tonight. Been a very formidable opponent tonight, I and mean, they've, they've played very well, very quick, very good at the skilled positions. Uh, nice line play out of a small group of kids on their offensive line, and um, been a tough opponent. We've had some good play out of uh, Andre Tari for London. Uh, other than that, with the, the long pass we catch we made for a touchdown, yeah, if you take London, London's first play off the board, that's London hadn't really shown up yet. And uh, the quickness of Big Walnut has caused us a problem. So um, I'm sure Dustin went in, Coach Calhoun went in and uh, addressed those problems. We've had a few fumbles, more than we want to mention, that have cost us, cost us uh, actually I think it was led to one of the touchdowns, didn't it? That uh, the touchdown that Big Walnut got. So we're down to 142 to go. We don't have much stats for you, but I'm sure we'll be starting off with the same lineup. Gary, one thing I wanted to touch on is this is a good, a good early test for London because Big One and London are in, in the same uh, region this year in the state high school right. playoff system. And London last year was put in with the uh, southwest region. Basically this year they're put in to the uh, northwest region. And that includes Big One and a lot of other state powerhouse teams. So London's going to definitely be tested and plus, like you said, the region they're in, I'm seeing some pretty good teams in this region. Yeah, when you look at this region, you're talking uh, Columbus Bishop Watterson, Columbus Bexley, Clyde, Fostoria, Galleon. You say Clyde. We played Clyde in the playoff game three or four years ago. Also looking at Norwalk and, uh, of course, Big Walnut to be big powers in this particular region of the state. And one thing to remember is we got eight teams from each region go to the playoffs this year, Gary. Right. So, you know, seven wins should pretty much put you in the playoffs. But from there, you're going to have to win out against teams like Big Wall if you want to advance. Right. So uh, we're getting down to kickoff time. London will receive. Go on the offense. Back we will have Myers. And I'm not sure who else. I'd like to see London really. I heard 
heard that Hall of Fame game will be October the 6th. It's been moved from from tonight. Gary, I started to say, the, uh, I'd like to see London come back here in the, in the second half, maybe try to reestablish a running game, uh, create a solid presence there, and maybe that'll open up the airwaves a little bit so Dickon can air it out. See if they can get off to a good start. We got, uh, who's that, Brock back also? Jordan Brock, Brock Myers, Myers. Back again with the up backs, Willard and, and Russell. Got some air under that one. Brock will take it on about the 15 yard line. He's coming right at the seam. He'll be taken down at about the 31, 32 yard line. So give him about a nice tackle by a sophomore there for Big One, Matt DeLong, number five. Number five, Matt DeLong, after a 15 yard return, 15 to 16 yard return approximately. It does give one a nice field possession at the 31, and that's all you can ask for out of your kick return team is get that ball up past the 25. Now we want to advance the ball. Seems like most of our play has been right in that area in the last half. As we got a whistle, give that water, 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 water boy. boy on the field, yeah, Gary. he's he my old position. <laughs> I heard that. Dickens rolls out, hands off, and he's caught behind the line of scrimmage. I believe that was Laney. What a hit laid on there by looked like number 11, Evan Circles, having a nice defensive game at linebacker for Big Walnut. <laughs> Evan Circles right in there, just like. Uh, they diagnosed the play. Pretty much have a second and ten, Gary. And London's really got to get that run, running game reestablished in order to uh, try to get ball possession and uh, field control. Big Walton's got their heads in the clouds now, so they're, they're going to have to bust that bubble. Well, they, they definitely believe they can play with London now. Well, it looked like a lot of movement there. A little delay as Willard knocks off about four or five yards. Short about two or three yards of the first down. Scott did a nice job there with a nice second effort. He got hit once and just kept on, kept the legs moving and picked up an extra four yards out of that. Third down and three on a 37 yard line. Runners run that pro eye with two wide outs. Pass to Myers. Hold on to the ball. First down. Up to about the 45 yard line. That was sort of what we call that a look in play. That's what you call a nice controlled offensive play. Uh, nice quick flip out. They I could have been an audible. They noticed the cornerback was off of Myers and they just threw it out there to him in the, in the flat for an easy first down. First and 10 for London on their own 45. First downs have been sparse so far for London. Another way again. And Myers out there, and he's taken out of bounds at about the 51. <laughs> 51, Carl. 48 yard line. <laughs> that ought, they ought to change that. It ought to be the 51. That way, when you go 100 yards, you've made a touchdown. Once again, London using, using their, their smarts there, noticing the quarterback off, and uh, We'll draw him up a couple times and maybe we'll see him maybe try for the bomb. We got a different, we got Inlow out here this time. Keep an eye on Wheeler. He's on the left hand side, top side of your screen. They haven't looked at Wheeler too much. And he was their go to there man go. last here year. They aired it out, like you said. And that was knocked down. And oh, we're going to get an interference call on your man. Smith? That's Charlie Smith. Uh, that's, your, that's your cousin out there. No, not <laughs> He's going after that like he's going after a paintbrush. Interference. That was a close call there. And that's one of them calls you got in the, we got here in the. Uh, that, that's another big difference in that a lot of people that, that watch a lot of football, college, and pros. You know, in high school, the ball doesn't necessarily have to be caught just, or catchable. As long as it's in the air and, and, and contact is made, it is interference. That one was catchable. He must have had his left hand on him when he swung at the ball. And most people right think, hand. too, that you automatically get, get the ball where the interference occurred, and that's not true in high school either. 
backhand off to Laney, and Laney's going to make something out of this. He picks up about seven yards, eight yards. Looked like he went further than that, but I give it he didn't. That'll make it uh, about second, second and two. two. BJ did a nice job of keeping his head up, and even when contact was made, he kept his head up, kept his legs moving, and found the. Found we got a time. Got a time out here, and I'm real proud of the electricians so far. The lights have held out. Hope I don't jinx it. Sticking under quarterback, under in the quarterback slide, looked like he might have called an audible. He's got some room. Right back in there, a fumble, and London is going to lose the ball, I believe. Like 22, B.J. Helton on it for Big Walnut. There's some kind of call here. Tyree is pointing to something. We got some flags flying. Look like a personal foul going to be called against the Big Walnut player who recovered the fumble. A little extracurricular hit there. That's going to set him back 15 yards. Probably half the distance to goal from this position. Put him back within the 10. Yeah, it looks like it. But by the same token, they will. They have recovered the fumble, and it is Big Wanus ball. I must have waved the flag off. Well, let's see. Oh, they're getting ready to mark it off, Gary. Talking about taking the air out of, the, out of London's uh, helium balloon there or something, Gary. And That's four fumbles tonight so far. Got a nice drive going, build up the confidence, and then unfortunately, couldn't hold on to the pigskin. They've got them pinned. Maybe if they could hold them down and hold them to a nice punt, maybe they get some good field possession out of this out of this series of down jet. Well, this type of tackling they do now board nowadays, it's not. They don't necessarily go after the legs or the person. They go after the ball. And if you don't have a super tight grip on that ball, it's going to come out of there pretty easy. So it's first and ten on the eight yard line for Big Walnut. Big Walnut's going with a very spread set here. Three, three receivers out wide, and then they've even been putting the tail back in motion. Almost a, what you call West Coast offense position. And they got Smith with the ball. He is knocked out the line. Looked like it might be a fumble, but I believe they might have got it back. I think London's can. pointing our way. But that was, looked like 12 Sean Myers in there, 54 Dusty Jones on nice hit. Somebody uh, tried to get the ball and somebody kicked it right back to him. Sean Myers in on that tackle. We'll set up second and 10. So it's like a big one that's going back to Nick Schwartz, the 6'5", 225 pound quarterback. Doesn't have quite the quickness. They lost a the yard on that play. We were looking to Schwartz to throw a little bit more. There's Helton, number 22, through the middle. When you can make runs like that, you don't have to throw too much. Those lines are moving our people pretty easy to number 23. There's 23, Sean Conley there, my, my, my fault. Big play here at third and four. London really needs to pin them down here and make them punt. On their 14-yard line, there's a lot of room out here to do something, though. And they're not going to get fumble. it. And there's another fumble. This is fumble eyes tonight. What's wrong with that ball? Looked like 23 Conley got back on top of it. Maybe somebody greased the pig skin. Here. <laughs> Somehow they managed to get to recover the fumble, so they're going to be a fourth down now, so they're going to have to punt the ball. Smith is the punter for Big Walnut. He hadn't shown us much so far tonight. <laughs> As far as that goes, but he's going to be in a pressure, huh? pressure situation, standing in his own end zone. Yeah, he's standing right on the one on the end zone line, one yard Here's line. Here's where I think you really benefit from having two returners back. I say let it go. Fair catch by Wheeler. Be sure you catch it. Wheeler. He's a sure-handed person, so that was a smart move in putting Wheeler back there. Okay, nice, nice possession on the 58-yard line, Gary. Oh, I mean the 42. <laughs> That's a good call. Steal my lines. That's okay. How are we looking at the crowd, Carl? We got a pretty good crowd now. <laughs> and the people see him? Carl, Carl's, he's uh, upset at me now. He's not going to show you the crowd. Nothing like a temperamental cameraman, I suppose. <laughs> He, he said he's into the game charge. now. Charles in charge. Okay, we got um, Mars out wide to the near side. 
Wheeler on this quick hit. Wheeler was making a move, caught the ball, and he must have picked up at least three or four yards. I almost have to think that London's audibleizing that call at the line. They're just they're looking at the corners playing soft on the wide outs and just making that quick pitch to the short side of the field for an easy five or six yard pickup. I think we spoiled London folks. A lot of people were asking why the game isn't on all week. But they don't realize that it just burns up the equipment playing over and over and over and over. So right now we're doing it after the game in all morning, Saturday morning. Laney no, on the handoff. Another quick hitter. Looks like a first down, Gary. Depends on the spot. It's awful close from here. Laney had to change his direction, go back against the drain, but he was able to pick up the yardage and make the first down. First and 10 on the 31 yard line. Well, you've got a tailback with the experience of B.J. Laney. You can see him. He gets his head up. He looks for the open spot and he hits it. Yeah, he's been. So got starting the there. On there man. Yeah, Carl tricked me. He put the student section on when I wasn't looking. He's playing mind games with me right now. Check see if there's any intelligent life down there. <laughs> yeah, they are kind of quiet. Another handoff to Laney, and he's caught behind the line. That was number 23 on the nice hit there, Conley. He's been running fullback all night and playing a great game at linebacker for Big Warren. Six twelve left to go in the third quarter. This game's flying right on by, Gary. London's going to have to start making a move, and right here looks like a great opportunity for him. And we still have a score of seven to six in favor of Big Walnut. Second and nine on the thirty-yard line. Corners are soft out here to the right on Wheeler on the bottom of your screen. I think they respect the speed and quickness of Wheeler. They're not going to give him a whole lot. Straight drop back pass. Wheeler's got and two guys covering him. He dropped the ball. Oh, and he dropped the we ball. We got a penalty flag. We got a penalty. Hold, a defensive hold, looks like to me. The ball was aired out right. Looked like it's right on the money almost. Looked like the big one. At, I don't think we caught it on television, but the big one, a defensive back. Had it, well, they're calling interference, but I thought it might have been a hold, Jerry. There was too much contact while that ball was in the air. Well, uh, he had two defenders right there, so that ball had to be threaded. Well, wasn't that a pretty pass oh. by Josh Dick in there? Yeah. He laid it right out. on the money. Laid it out there very nicely. A nice pass protection by the offensive line. We have a tendency to forget about the job that those young men do. And, and they did They uh, kind of forced him to throw a little quicker than I think he wanted to because uh, they did put some pressure on I was watching him before he released the ball, and they did have quite a good pressure on him. Well, and you're looking at London's revamped offensive line tonight with Coyle at center, but you've got to get, give those guys some credit. Abbott Finally got Norman. the crowd into it. First and 10 on a 15. Pitch out to Laney. He's caught behind the line of scrimmage. He won't go down. He got a second win, and he's drives his way to about the 8-yard line. He was determined he did all that on his own because he was caught behind the line of scrimmage. B.J. Laney, that weight room is paying off. That was some determination there, Jerry. And that's what you got to have, that determination. He's, uh, this is his senior year, so he's got to pull out all the stops and go for all the gusto he can get. We got a second and four on the, on the nine yard line. London's looking good. Keep it simple. The corners. Another handoff to Laney. He stopped at the line of scrimmage. Might have got a half a yard. Nice play again by, by Conley, the linebacker. He's had a well of a football game tonight. Just look like B.J. Helton in there also, number 22. Goes Myers back on the field. The place is in low. We got a third and three on the eight yard line. Gary, you talk about your big plays in the ball game right here is uh, yes. definitely a big play. With 4:25 to go in the third quarter, third and three from from the eight yard line. London's got to find some way to pick up that first down. Crowds into it. That's the first thing out of business, and the quarterback sneak would be the way to get it. The way that line is set up, defensive line is set up. Quick pitch out to Miles. Oh man, nothing there. play was kind of diagnosed but the, the pass was a little high 
Nice coverage out there by Cody Wolf from Big Long. So we got a London looks like they're fourth and three. The, bringing on the field goal team. Well, for the field goal for a I second see, time. I see Dale out there with the uh, with the tee. He's the holder. Sean Myers, number 12, the kicker. Fourth and three on the eight yard line. And that missed long 40 yard field goal may pay off benefits right here because it gave Sean the chance to get out on the field and it's a big chip shot right here. Get that line to hold balls down, the ball's up. It looks like it is no good off to the left. It had the distance and everything, but it went left. So we still have a score of seven to six, big walnut. And I'm looking at the coach and he's not cutting on anybody. He's saying, keep your heads up, let's play ball. We're still in this game and that's what you gotta do. You gotta make these kids believe that they can do it. So I think, I think Big Walnut came in here uh, not sure if they could play with London. I think that it was a big confidence boost for them. That second series when uh, Big Walnut stopped London, I think it was a big confidence boost. And then to be able to go in uh, at halftime with the lead, but Fumbles have played a big, big part in this game. That's Conley, number 23, the fullback again. And it was no whistles blown. Now they're going to call it, probably call the ball down, but there weren't any whistles blown. I'm sure they called the stop on the uh, yeah. stop of the progress of 23 Conley. But nice tackle there. It looked like I think that was 54. Uh, Dusty Jones out there. He said uh, Jordan Brock was in on that tackle. Is that what they said? According to the announcer, whoever hit him, they, they picked him up and ran him backwards. Second and seven on the 23 yard line. Three, three, three Pitch to go. To right to Smith. He's got speed. He's got some room too. He'll be running out of bounds on about the. Jordy Jackson runs him out of bounds on about the. Uh, what's that? 37. That'd be 37. When your nose tackle's out there, you're showing you got a young man's got some speed getting out there from nose tackle position to make the tackle on the sweep. And wants to play. Good pursuit. I'm not sure. We got a penalty here. Preliminary call looked like a hold, maybe. So we got channel somebody down there. Whoever's holding that camera, it's a big man. Put him in at nose guard. <laughs> Carl said he probably just bought that to get in the game free. <laughs> Makes it second and 12 on the 18. And, uh, Big Walnut's not wasting any time. London's not even in their defensive set yet. Walnut's already they got their big quarterback in there. Look for him, maybe a throw. Uh, that's, a motion, that's a motion penalty. I think he came toward the line. Well, if it is against them, it's uh, all the penalties went against us early. So maybe it's going our way now. We could, could manage to pin them back here and make them make them punt. I don't think. Uh, could be a big advantage to London. We could have used those two field goals. I remember a young man that would would prayed for situations like that. Clark Tobin. There's Smith coming around the left. They're spreading him wide. Tyree couldn't reach him, but who was that? That's Jordan, Jordan Brock. Brock. Took the big dive and leap and hey, come here, man. You're mine. You know, Gary, not to want to take anything away from Jordan Brock, but it's the ability of those defensive linemen to keep the guards and the tackles off of them linebackers so right. they can make big plays like that. And you see who was out there making the dive for the tackle was the number 21, Tyree, just before Jordan Brock made the play. It truly is a team effort, even though one man makes a big hit, which was a great hit by Jordan. It really is a team effort to stop a play like that. Get back to your big plays, Gary. This is another big one. Man in motion. Smith. Warm to throw. This quarterback's got an arm. He's got Smith out there. And he breaks one tackle, breaks another tackle, and he's oh, out, of out of bounds. Because he was trying to make his way. And he's not very big. How big is Smith? Well, it looks like six foot 180. I think he might be stretching that just a little bit, Gary. What it looks like now is that number two Smith's going to have to go back to punt. Uh, number two Actually, Smith's not going to get a punt this change, time. Changing him up. It'll be the backup quarterback, Joel Brockman, back here to punt. Fourth and nine on the 21-yard line. 
Ooh, that could have been close. London like Wheeler with the fair catch at the 49-yard uh, yard line. So London will take off right at midfield. Once again, we have 303 to go in the third quarter. Score has not changed. Still 7-6. Big walnut. We've definitely had our chances. That's for sure. At the amount of fumbles we had, and I'm sure there'll be fumble practice. <laughs> We've, and fumble we've, recovery practice too. We've seen both these teams with a lot of two-way players. And I think the uh, last three minutes of the third quarter here and the fourth quarter is going to find out who, who put in the time this summer to be in shape. Well, I'm knowing, I know for sure that uh, Coach Wilson is definitely a person who puts, gets people in shape. It's like Dick and rolled to the left on the close side of the field and just no room to pitch and no room to run. Yeah, and it seemed like that's the side of the field that uh, Big Walnut was doing their most damage was the short side. So Myers comes out and uh, I seen Inlow, Inlow, in. Inlow goes back in with the play. We got to figure out some way to break him down. Got Inlow wide to the near side. Cornerbacks are still soft on the bottom of your screen. I don't know if you can see Inlow, but Dickens, Dickens looking that way. He's caught by the shirt. Grabbed by the shirt, and that's one of Zeke's famous things, get material. And he got a hold of that uh, shoulder pad and the jersey up there and up the end of the I give a lot of credit to this big one at defensive line. They're definitely undersized, but they played a heck of a ball game. They're tonight. playing what uh, Coach Wilson calls smash mouth football. Well, third and nine, Gary, at the 50 yard line. London's got to find something here that's going to work for him. Oh, look at this. Laney's at the bottom of your screen out to the right. Line them up at a receiver position. Look for something tricky here. That wasn't tricky enough. That's Willard. Yeah, well, at least we got almost back to the line of scrimmage. They had a, I don't know whether that was a blitz or not. It might have been set up for a, uh, let's see what's going on. It like they were trying to get the ball to Wheeler down the left-hand sidelines, but I... It's po it was a possible draw play. It's awful tough when you're a quarterback to uh, be rolling to your left hand. If you're a right-hand quarterback, you're rolling to your left-hand side and make that throw across your body. It's, it's tough. Well, especially when you got uh, defensive players rolling down, coming in on you from both angles. And I don't think he saw the uh, defender coming from the near side. Justin will be punting again. Give you a chance to show his words. We're down to a minute to go in the third quarter. Still score seven to six. Oh, and we have a flag. Like London jump. That's going to set him back five more yards. We've definitely had our chances here. In a like, game like this, anything can happen. Looked like Big Walnut was loading up the right-hand side, possibly looking at a block. They've only got one guy back. How big is this what punt receiver? I don't think he's big enough to have him. <laughs> that looks like number 25 back there, Jeff Evans, 5'7", 150-pound junior. He, might be the, he is playing deep. He's he might be the deep. fastest kid on the team. He could be. A decoy. And Lou's got it off. Another beautiful punt. From High, good nice. hang time. Somebody down, takes, it. Uh, Somebody down it. Don't let it roll backwards. That's Matt Russell finally dropped the ball. So the big walnut will take over on about the 27, 28 yard line. First and 10. Big walnut's basically been playing this game pretty much like it's been tied. I mean, they've been up by one, but. But they are uh, been in trying to be in ball control and trying to establish some kind of offense against women's defense. I really think both teams have been trying to get an offense going here and it seems like it's about time they think something's going good for them. Uh, something happens, a fumble or a missed pass or something. They got their big quarterback in there again, number 10. Jordy Jackson in on that tackle that time. Jordan, Jordan Brock in there also. 
I what, believe told me a 170 pound nose tackle for London was going to make the majority of the tackles. I told you he was crazy, Gary. Well, let me tell you, um, we had a kid that was probably about 130 uh, quite a few years back. He's since uh, he's passed away. His name was Wilson. Um, Kevin Wilson was one of the meanest nose tackles or in, in middle linebackers you ever want to see. And uh, we had another kid named Fred Fleur, who was about the same size back in the 60s, I believe. It was the same way. I don't even think I was born in the 60s. Though. I doubt it. I uh, vaguely remember it. Uh, remember my dad telling me about it. <laughs> So we've got a big walnut player down hurt. Marcus Candy goes in the game, giving number 71 a break. Mike Coyle. Coyle's been playing both ways, so you got to get them blows in there for the de defensive and offensive linemen. Give them a chance to get a little rest. Got the clock on the roll, and we're under 20 seconds to go in the third period. 76 is Pitch to score. the right to Smith on the close side of the field again. And that little rascal can fly. B.J. Laney out there pushing out of bounds. I mean, when he gets them feet turning, they just like wheels in motion. So we're down to 11.6 seconds. And uh, some people might determine this is fairly boring football after watching last week's game. But <laughs> if you are a foot, if you are a football fan. This kind of football game, it's like watching a, a one nothing baseball game. But, yeah. But there's definitely a lot of good, good athletic plays going on in the field. Sets back. Fumble. I think it might have went out of bounds. And we still got 5.4 seconds to go in the quarter. That's going to be a first down to move the chains, Gary. A nice catch here by number nine, Paul Ross. Big Walnuts moving the chains pretty good. Third and, well, we got a first and ten. First and ten on about uh, 39. Well, if Big Walnut sticks to form, this will be number ten, Nick Schwartz's last snap from under center. Because they are going to look for him, they'll probably go with number four, Joel Brockman, a quarterback the rest of the way. That's a gaggle, I think. Yeah, that's, a, that's more than a giggle, gaggle, everything. I tell you, there was half the team was in on that. Got a scrum of big wall of players and a scrum of London players. And we end the, the man down. In the third quarter, and we have a score of uh, 76 as Carl picks up a shot of the scoreboard and the man on the scaffold down there. That's our end zone camera, man. He's getting the scoreboard, too. Turn around there, fella. That's assistant coach Bill Burmley on the film. Bill Burmley. So how are we doing on time, Carl? Okay. We're up, we're up, yeah. So maybe we get a, some, a shot of cheerleaders in the crowd. We got the, uh, sound like the war drums are out now, so the Atlanta Braves are on the loose down there. hoy -oh. Cheerleaders work hard all, they work hard all year round to try to stay in shape and be able to do the cheers and lead to get the crowd pumped up. So we got to give them their play too. Yeah, there's that student section down there. The hatchet bunch. Like I say, this is game is, uh, <clears throat> seems to be a lot of fundamental. Nothing ex extraordinary. Just the turnovers on London's parts really cost him. Right. Number 10 still under center for Big Walnut. Quick and pitch to 23 Conley around the left hand side, and there's nothing doing it. Tackle made by 69. And Micah Stokes. Micah Stokes. And he picks up a gain of five yards on that play. So it's third and five now. I look for Big Walnut to stay with their game plan and just keep running the football. It takes time off the clock, builds their confidence. Yeah, you got to keep that clock running. There's some controversy down there. The officials. I think London's got 12 men on the field right now. Somebody went out. 
No, somebody came in and I don't think anybody went out. Carl said somebody got cut. They had to go out. Oh, that was grounded. Good, good quarterback. I mean, uh, pass, but shortstop did play. Did you have to catch six foot, 170 pound Jordy Jackson putting the heat on six <laughs> five, 225 pound Nick Schwartz? Well, London better get off the field. And they're they're having a quick huddle, quick set here. No huddle. They didn't get it off quick as they wanted to. I heard a whistle blow. He's got two receivers back. They put us back. That's Sean Myers on a fair catch. And he just lets it go. So down there by number 20, Cody Wolf, who we've seen on special teams tonight a couple times. When I, when you decide you're not going to catch the ball, I would uh, suggest we just take off running and get away from it. You see that bounce that ball took it, good, very easy bounce right towards Sean. That's if not a round hit. ball. That's an off yeah. ball, and you can't tell which way it's going, so you got to get away from that for a ball. So London's going to take over almost like another kickoff situation. If I was London, I, I don't think I'd be getting too desperate yet for a touchdown, but they do have to put a sustaining drive here together. First and 10 on the 18-yard uh, line. At least to get some field position back. Because when they're on the change of possessions on the punts, they're losing field possession. Hand off to Laney, and he's caught at the line of scrimmage. So it looks like the, that play is not working right now. Had to make it still second and ten, maybe second and eight. Second and nine on the 19 yard line. We're under 11 minutes to go in the game, in the contest. We haven't seen London use Wheeler much tonight, so except for that first play of the ball game, so keep your eyes peeled here. Dipping back to pass, he's looking for Wheeler across the middle. He throws and we out. got we got a penalty, intentional grounding. Nobody there. There was nobody nowhere near. Matter of fact, it looked like Wheeler was covered this side of the field. Yeah, Wheeler had come a run run a post pattern across the middle, and I thought maybe Dickon was looking for Tyree, but he got caught up on the inside on the block, so there was nobody out there at all. So we got an intentional grounding on that play. That's a little bit of inexperience there. He didn't really have anywhere to throw the ball. Actually, we've got a backup quarterback just went in the ball game, Dale. Takes us back to the uh, nine yard line. Third and about third in a month. Number 11, Ross Deo, the senior, is in the ball game at quarterback under center. He's, he's a left-handed thrower. He's back to throw. He's Number complete to Myers. Myers. Oh. That looks like a first down, Gary. No, no it's a long to way from first down. We stood back to the original line of scrimmage. Well, that's going to make it picked up 12 yards there on a nice play. Nice pitch and catch between Deo and Myers. Still gonna make it third and fourth or fourth and ten. Fourth and twenty. Fourth and ten, yes, yeah, so we're looking at uh, automatic punt here. Big Walnut seems to be winning the field possession war on the exchange punt, so something's gotta give here, folks, or London's going down to their first defeat of the season. Bad snap. Ball is nice good hang punt. time. Not very deep. Takes a London bounce. We'll go across the 50-yard line, so we end up on about the 49-yard line. Big Walnut will take over, leading 7-6 with 9.35 to go in the contest. Stick around, folks. There's more football coming at you. Neither team's looking very fatigued, Gary, and uh, quite a tribute to these kids to be playing out here in this 70 degree heat. Yeah, it's warm. Cheerleaders got their heavy sweaters on tonight. I think they're <laughs> crazy. Yeah, wait till winter comes and uh, they'll still have the same thing on, freezing. Big quarterback Schwartz back to pass. Oh, wide right open across the middle. A beautiful play by Big Walnut. That's Nick Grandinico, <laughs> number 29. First time we've seen him. I've seen them throw to him tonight. 
Yeah, they found that opening right there in the middle of the defense. And they've been setting that up all night. He must have been lined up in a slot position and he took it across the middle. We got a, they got a first and 10 on the London's 23 yard line. The momentum is going their way. There's nothing doing on that play. Andre Tyree and Jordy Jackson. I'll give them credit that they're not afraid to go at Tyree. Sometimes with a big player like that, you're better off just running right at him instead of trying to run away from him. Yeah, you might as well run at him and get ready to take your punishment, huh? I think if it was me, I'd be running away from him. <laughs> I'd be trying to. <laughs> I think he'd probably run me down. <laughs> Second and nine on the 22-yard line. Quick pitch to the left to Smith. He cuts it back against the grain. And he's thrown down at about the eight-yard line. Number 12, Sean Myers, finally made the tackle for London. He picked up a first down. So they're going to have first and goal. First and goal for Big Wan, and we got a timeout for London. Something's going sour here. Like you say, it's a big turnaround from the win we had last week. Big Walnut's going to make us uh, earn this one if it, if it turns out that way. Seven to six, still anything can happen. I have to say I was looking for probably a lot more offense tonight after reading, reading up in the newspapers on Big Walnut and the explosive offense they had and the talented athletes they had. So maybe London's done very well to hold them down, you know, to just seven points so far. That blocked extra point is playing very big right now in the strategy of And not only that, that missed uh, extra point plus two field goals. Well, the extra are point was blocked. Real big. The yeah. Extra point was blocked, and then the and then the 25-yard field goal missed to the left. So well, we attempted two field goals. Um, one from 40 was yeah fairly short, but still a nice kick by number 12, Sean Myers. He's only a sophomore. for Big Walnut just try to punch this thing in on the ground and they go to Smith number two across and the he's middle. in almost untouched they went away from Tyree Big Walnut goes up 13 to 6 just your basic quick hitter right over top of the left guard nice fundamental football play they're using the kiss theory keep it simple stupid 13 to 6 as they go for the extra point. 8.27 to go in the contest. London has to stop this extra Big point some kind of way. And we got a. I'm not sure what the call is. Encroachment on London. Which is not going to do much of anything in this scenario of everything. It's going to move the ball. Yeah, they're going to move the ball if it's possible. They go for two. They move it to half this is the goal line. Yeah, they're setting up to go for two. He's thinking about bringing them in. Big Walnut's going to go for two, so that's going to be a costly penalty against the left-hand side of the London line there. And they're calling their team off of, uh, off and with a timeout there. That's one so. of the big difference in the uh, high school game and the college game and the pro game. People think, oh, he jumped off. Well, he got back. Well, in high school, you jump, you're into that neutral zone area, it's all even as a defensive player. Encroachment. That's Got to front. stop this one. Nice. And we may have. We nice may have. Job. It's going to be close. They held him. Hey. I'll tell you so what. London oh, still. Buddy. They may have made a big mistake by not going for that extra point. Dusty Jones <laughs> made a big hit on him right at the beginning of the run. It completely stopped his momentum. But looks like looks like Tyree Jones might be a little hurt. Hurt. Well, the first hit was made by Jones. It stood him up and got him moving in a different direction. So if, uh, if he was even slowed down at all by Jones and the Tyree's there, he might as well say, well, pick him up and slam him. <laughs> so London holds on a, kind of a, probably a silly call there. Oh. Yeah. Well, what it did, Gary, is we still have to score. And both uh, 
touchdown and extra point to tie the game up. Yeah, what they do is they, they call a five yard penalty. It's a half the distance to the goal. And what it does, it brings you a yard and a half closer to running the ball in on the two right. point conversion. So right. your odds are actually much more in your favor of trying that. But your odds as far as winning this game at 14 to six, so Just if London scores seven points, it'd still be 14 to 13. Uh, mathematically, and of course that's where it was when I was in London. I don't know how it is now. Uh, that extra point could be all the difference in the world. Now London could possibly tie it up or go for two and win the game yeah, if they score. There, something to think about. Their 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 kicker was a fresh, big Walnut's kicker was a freshman too, so they might not, not have much confidence in them either. Kicked it out of bounds, so there will be a penalty. Well, they had enough confidence first time, uh, Keith. Yeah, oh yeah, he put it through. And he put it through, so. And last year, we had so much confidence in our kicker, Myers. He's, uh, he was unbelievable as a, as a freshman. So I don't take anything away from the freshman. Looks like London's going to get position on... Maybe the 35-yard line? Yeah. Is that how it sets up? Take over to the 35-yard line. 65 so, yards from pay dirt, Gary, and London's got to put something together now because there's only 822 left in this ball game. That's a fairly decent field position, first and 10. we got 822 to go in this game. London's down by seven, 13 to six. Big one that stays soft on the corners. They're going to give him that couple yards because they know what kind of speed. They go back to pass. He's going deep for Myers. Oh, that ball looked like it should have been caught. Just off his hands. Nice coverage out there by number 20, Cody Wolf. That ball looked like it should have been caught. Tell you what, they've got a lot of confidence in Myers or else they're putting so much pressure on uh, Wheeler because Wheeler, Wheeler, on the Wheeler was uh, the big playmaker last year. And we haven't seen much of him this year. I think London so might far. be able, London's run pretty much split receivers all night. Maybe look for them to line somebody up into a slot position to try to work two receivers down one side of the field. Well, they got fact, Tyree just, out wide this time. That's just what they're doing right now. They're working Myers into a slot on the right-hand side, and they put the Tyree, Tyree, the tight end, out to the left. If the Tyree bottom, comes the across the middle. To get it out to Tyree, he's going to run over somebody. Ooh. And he makes his way down to close to a first down. To a first down. And he's coming off limping. That's a lot of weight to go down on the, their leg and stuff like that. If like you go down wrong. Number 84, Edley, who scored the touchdown last week on special teams in the ball. He's in the game? Trace Andre, a tight end position. Let's hope everything's okay with big number 21. So far, Dick, or since Dickens been out and Deo's been in, he's thrown in like three out of five plays. I think he's the more their passing quarterback. Laney for the and first Laney down. The first that's, down. A, that's a big, that's a big three yards right there, getting that first down. It's also a big morale team booster there. We got 7:28 to go. They're moving the chains. First and ten on the 44-yard line. Laney picks up a few more yards. He had over 100 yards last week. Of course, we didn't have quite this kind of competition. And somehow they're getting in, into the quarterback. I'd just hazard a guess that BJ's probably had close to 15 to 16 carries tonight. Probably has an average name more yeah. than three yards a carry. Yeah, I'd be hustling up here because, like you say, to get the end of the game, they're going to be needing this time. Quick pass out to Wheeler in the slot. He's got some room. Hold on to the ball. Yeah. Wheeler down to the 40-yard line. That's a big first down there. That's your go-to man right there. Mr. Wheeler. I all stayed in basketball. I mean, all stayed in, in, in the baseball this year. One of the quicker players and quicker runners on the team. I think London saw some real advantages. They've been running the split receivers the whole game. Just the past couple times, they that, that time Wheeler went into the slot and freed him up very nicely. Well, see, now Dickens was also pretty dangerous at her running back. I'm surprised they haven't used him more at that position with Dale in there. They got so many people, it's kind of hard to get them all in there at the same time. 
Got to get back to pass again. They're looking for that play to Myers again against number 20. And that's twice it went right through his hands. My goodness. That looked like a replay again, Gary. Right through his hands. He had his hands. He had a hold of that ball. Those balls you're supposed to catch. I've been very impressed by Ross Dale. He's thrown a nice football, shown a lot of confidence for a backup quarterback coming into the ball game, and uh, seems to be leading London right on down the field. But well, at the beginning of the season, the hype was that Ross Dale was going to be the starting quarterback, and then I think it changed with Dickens' ability to be able to scramble and run and stuff like that. Uh, Dickens moved in there, so they we got two fine quarterbacks to go to. If one's having a bad night, we can go to another one. So, second and ten on the 41-yard line. That's VJ Lane. VJ Lane. Middle. No, and he's loose. Away. He's loose. Oh, almost. A, oh no. No VJ. No flag, Carl. No flag. But I didn't see a flag. No flag. No flag. Uh, I seen. I could swear I seen a clip. I saw a clip, Gary. <laughs> no flags. That's all matters. If there's no right? flag, it's no clip. I didn't I'm, see no clip, Gary. I'm sure the coaches are fussing about that on the other side. It sure looked like one from here. Yeah, he was well past that five-yard blocking zone, and uh, he just barely hit him. I suppose that don't count. <laughs> he, well, it was uh, no flag. No flag. That's about First and ten on the 20. Crowd's on their feet here. 5.55 left to go in the ball game. Dale in the center. Back to pass. It's Wheeler in the slot. Oh! oh. I'm kind of, I can't understand these fellows not catching that ball. Somebody definitely greased the pigskin tonight, Gary, because we got a lot did of Wheeler have his, Carl, did Wheeler have his hands on that one? It looked like he had his hands on that one. London's got a man down, or Big Walnut does. I, I like hope he's not hurt. This, it could be, could be cramps. It's a hot night. Fatigue's got to be setting in on all of these two-way players. We kind of try to stay away from that. We might pick up some crowd or... Something. Um, how about the adults, Carl? Are we giving them any play tonight? There's a fine shot of London's faithful. That's a beautiful back of the head there, Gary. Yeah. <laughs> Go far enough to the right, you'll pick up a big head. <laughs> That's 32 back up on his feet, Brian Howe for Big Walnut. So let's hope he's able to continue. Or actually, I'm sorry, that was 23. Conley's had a nice, nice ball game tonight. So. Good shot, of crowd, crowd view there. I'm looking for that big head. I ain't seen it yet. There it is. Cubby, chubby, cubby. That's Andre's uncle. So you see how big he is. You can see how big uh, Andre's is. They probably bump heads every now and then because they. Got a lot of history in that in that uh, in that family of football players. Well, London's going to have an opportunity here, second and ten from the 20-yard line from the big one at 20. They were back to pass. It looks like they're letting him. You know, what's the route to Tyree? Oh, it was tipped before it, it got tipped. to him. But I tell you what, the, they are playing. What do he do? Oh, we had a little altercation there between London's number 21 and Big Wallace's number four, and the officials didn't see it. Oh, yes, they did see it. I'd say 21 for London's probably coming out of the ball game uh, Boy, oh, with an escort from the officials. There's no reason for that. I don't know if that picked that, up on TV, but uh, uh, Carl must have picked it up. Very for, and I think... Uh, Number 21, Andre Tyree, is going to find him a seat for the rest of the evening. You know, that, you know what? They haven't marked off any kind of penalty. So Nothing was called. Must have been called. So we got a break on that one. 10. If it was an ejection, they would have had to call a 15-yard penalty. Who, who uh, initiated contact, though? Oh. That play there 
They know it's coming. It's starting to get a little bit more They know it's today. coming. They're sitting there watching for it. That's twice it's almost been picked off. So we're at fourth and ten on the 20-yard line. The yeah, last play they tried to catch, the, they sent the wide receiver wide and they tried to catch the tight end into that slot position. This time they ran a slant slant from the wide receiver position. Neither one of them, they're sniffed out big time by Big Wong. Well, you know they're going to play uh, Wheeler real tight. That's something that did, didn't happen last year. They kind of let Wheeler run free and he made some. Another one of those big plays of the game. London's going for it. Fourth and ten from the big one at 20-yard line. Trips receivers to the right, to the right. Dale in the shotgun formation. And he's picked up. He lets her fly. It's going deep to Myers in the end zone. And they call it no good. Got a flag on the play. Where's the flag at, Gary? Uh, the flag was flown right in the middle of the field. Looks it's like against, against London. London for unsportsmanlike conduct. Gary, London's going to learn that those penalties are really hurting their football team. Yeah. And if this lesson doesn't sink into them tonight, the cooler heads must prevail. Make a lot more. And there's another penalty on us for something. Penalties are killing us. They've already got the ball. Well, when you look at London tonight, I'm talking four turnovers. Uh, just haven't seen a good mental football game out of this team. You know, you just can't make mistakes like that after a dead a dead play. Uh, we've seen three personal fouls, one other one that should have happened, and, and London just needs to get their head in the ball game. And that's strictly frustration. So mark off about 30 yards. We got an ejection here on against London. Looks like number 22, maybe BJ Laney, has been ejected from the ball game. So that's going to be a 15-yard penalty plus the ejection. It's getting pretty wild out there, uh, Key. Just absolutely uncalled for, Gary. I mean, this team saw last year how much it hurt them in the playoff game when they had numerous personal fouls against them for fighting on the field, and, and it's just completely uncalled for. They moved the ball up to the 50-yard line, 49-and-a-half-yard line. It's a 15-yard personal foul penalty, penalty and a 15-yard ejection penalty for unsportsmanlike conduct. Well, so much for that. Let's uh, move on with the game. Yep. What London needs to do now is get their head back in the ball game and realize they're still only down by seven points with 5.27 left to go in the ball game. Yeah, the game should not be over. You get a good defensive stop here and make them punt, you're going to get the ball back. And London good stop proved, there. And London proved with Dick and a quarterback, or with Dale a quarterback, that they could move the football. So it's a nice stop there, second and ten. We can put a stop on here. Maybe we can't get the punt that we need. And they picked up maybe a yard that time. He's second and uh, second and nine on the 49-yard line of London. They've stayed with number 10, Nick Schwartz, at quarterback. Quick pitch to Smith around the left-hand side. Smith guy gets his wheels running. Hey, he got to pick up about two or three yards that time. And a nice tackle there by 31, Matt Russell. Checked into the ball game and replaced the number 54, Dusty Jones. Neither London seen. has a lot of underclassmen this year, and people don't understand that. We are not only reloading, we're rebuilding too. So you're going to have your ups and downs like this until they get a little bit of experience there. We're under uh, right at four minutes to go in the contest. Schwartz is going back to pass. He's looking out here to the right. 
That's Smith. a pass on to Smith. He's taking the first. bring up a fourth and five, Gary, so maybe we do have that punt that we need here. Dickens made the first uh, contact that time. Washmouth also in on that tackle, so I can say fourth and five. Do we pull a fake punt? We got London kind of on their heels now. They maybe. proved that they can play defense against London. Do you keep the ball? Brockmeyer, he's kicking that out of bounds. No, he isn't. Wheeler's got the ball on the short side. Nowhere to go here. but out of, bounds. out of bounds. Didn't have anywhere to go but out of bounds. He went out on about the 19-yard uh, line. So London takes over with 3-3-3 to go in the contest. First and 10. 80 yards to pay dirt, Gary. 80 yards. We saw that last drive cover about 80 yards. Dale led him down the field. He just couldn't capitalize there toward the end when those couple slant passes went bad. So London's got to find another trick besides that slant pass now. Yeah, because they're laying for that one. They're laying for Wheeler. They know from past experience that Wheeler beat him to death last year. Jordan Brock's come in as tailback to replace the ejected DJ Lane. They are rolling out. His ball, ball is batted down and intercepted. That's number 22, B.J. Helton, their all-league defensive back, making that play. Pass was deflected as it left uh, Dale's hands. And there's where Height comes in. How Dale can't be over 5'11". Things definitely don't seem to be going London's way here with 326 left to go in the ball game. So... BW takes over on the 30-yard uh, line, first and 10. 325 to go in the contest. London down 13 to 6. Number two, Smith, over the left-hand side, going for the first down. He looks like he got eight or nine yards. I look for Big Walnut just to pound it out from here, try to kill, eat up as much clock as they can, and if they can get out of here with a 13 to 6 win, I think they're going to be real happy. I got that. You got that right. And this could be a big learning experience for London, too. But London went all, like last year, 10 wins in a row. Uh, maybe a loss would have put them a little bit better shape to go further in the playoffs. Well, when you're looking at the new playoff format, seven wins should get you in. So you can have a couple losses as long as you learn from them and get better from them. That's a first down for Big Walnut over the left-hand side. They're just kind of moving at will now. We're down to 241 as they move the chains. 13 to 6, Big Walnut. <laughs> Looks like the big 300 pounder Gandy's checking in there for London on the defensive line. We've seen him play a little bit tonight. Hitter up the middle. Uh, Smith, nope. Smith, Smith couldn't find him outside. Inside and made it the outside. Dickens pushed him out of bounds about the five yard line. What'd you call that, Carl? Yeah, he bounced outside. After. I see him hit the middle there. And this Smith, uh, maybe you better call him your cousin. You know, yeah. Dude, yeah. Tell you what, he's knocked down probably a good 120 yards tonight in this ball game. His second strong performance because he was the player of the game last week against Walnut Ridge. So he's really showing his stuff. And we got uh, first and goal on the three. And they're wanting to get back at us because I think we put it on them pretty good last year. It's 23 going up the middle. Conley, the big fullback. He's short. Yeah, big bugs. Carl thought it was this big bug went by and he thought it was a flag. <laughs> be second goal from about the one. 157 to go in the contest and uh, BW is knocking on the door again. Kind of look at this game in perspective, Gary. The big one, it's really, it's been a close ball game, but Big one that except for the first offensive play for for London has basically dominated this football game. Yeah, and they just scored Touchdown. again. Number 23, Sean Conley, the big fullback.
This is just a payback from last year. I'd say London's getting it handed to him right now, but one thing about football teams, when, when a little adversity hits them, you'll see what kind of character they have and see if, see if they've, they've got the character to, to bring in the comeback next week against, against Springfield Northeastern. We're looking at 19-6. Uh, Pending the extra point. Here's that kicker we were talking about a while ago. Ball's down. He's right through the uprights. It's that freshman kicker. Right up the middle. So he there's. Wears, he wears a lineman's number, but. Uh, 20 to 6. They list him at 5'10, 200. So. All that weight stacked into one little package there, a little short package. 20 to 6. VW on top. I see a lot of London's heads, heads down, but you know what? They don't really have anything to be ashamed of. They just need to pick it up and move on. I think this program's moved in, moving in the right direction. There's a lot of positives going on out there, and you just need to take those positives and get things turned around a little bit here. One loss doesn't make a whole season. It's That's so right. Go bad for it. But a big walnut coming out thinking he was going to kick into the wrong end of the field. Instead of change into the field, his car picks up the crowd peoples. They're starting to file out now. Well, Gary, how would you evaluate London's offense tonight? Letter A through F as a grade. I can't do that because things that we've had some weird things happen. We've had a lot of fumbles tonight, which uh, would have made a big difference in how this game might have turned out. Some a lot of drop passes. Uh, we had two or three passes I seen that I felt were, should have been caught that would have made a difference in the game in the score. So uh, he's got to go back to fundamental ball as number 12 Myers returns for about eight to ten yards. I know and he ben, takes a pretty hard hit on his left knee. Big Walnut showing up with 20 points on the scoreboard, but I tell you what, I'd give London's defense probably a B-plus tonight. I mean, that's, that they've, they've put together a pretty solid effort against a uh, pretty highly touted offensive crew from Big Walnut. Well, with the exception of that uh, first touchdown play we made in the first quarter, London's offense has it sputtered quite a bit. You can see some high points, and then all of a sudden there'll either be a fumble or some kind of turnover and uh, we can only get better that's yep. all there is to it got somebody sliding out on a wheeler he's going to break in he tries to get out of bounds but that's not going to work keeps that clock running picks up you can probably see from the camera that big walnut pretty much went into a very soft defensive position on the field as far as their backs defensive backs and linebackers playing quite a bit off the field off the line I mean. they're up there pretty close this time somebody better pick that man up look out and he didn't have any choice but to duck and lay down number 88 joe shaner Somebody just turned the lights off in here and uh, hit that switch there. It wasn't us. 40 seconds to go in the contest. Dale in. airs it out. Yeah, laid that thing out there nice. And it was picked off. That was number two, probably big one on the top. That's your game. cousin, Sam Smith. Smith. Taking a Old Sammy. So it looks like it's going to go down as a 20 to 6 loss for London. Somebody keeps turning the lights off on the other end. Of the, somebody's not the other end doing it, I think. They just went out the door. Probably some kid. Always blaming on the kids, right, Gary? Yeah, it's usually what it is. We had a bunch of them up here on the step here a while ago and then it looked like they were trying to climb over that ledge. That's all we needed somebody to go over that and had to run them out of here. 34 seconds ago and Big Walnut takes the lead. I'll take care of this. Okay. Let's go up top.
so good. The Raiders will be away next week. I was trying to get that there together. And once again, this is another Red Raider contest. It scared me. Let me get my hat right here. Keith Smith helped me out. And we'll see you next week at Northeastern. So next week, September Final 8th, score, the varsity team six, will be at Springfield Northeastern. The following see ya. week, at West Jefferson and back Watch here at Lewis Field on Good night. September 22nd. Double Bye-bye. Adios. Take me home, Tom. <laughs>